Hello, welcome to Earth Engine Tutorial 108. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do journal statistics with two images uh, using Google Earth Engine. So, if you have been follow, uh, following with my tutorials, you might have seen this one um, journal statistics uh, tutorial 12 and tutorial 13 uh, statistics by groups. So, essentially, uh, what we're going to talk about today. Is kind of a, the idea is very really similar to this one. So journal statistics by group, uh, the input uh, is uh, one image and one vector data. So basically one Earth engine image and also one Earth engine feature collection. But uh, what we're going to do today is actually two images, um, one image and the other one is basically a group. Uh, basically, you have a group of values within the image because. Uh, for example, if you're trying to let's say calculate the mean temperature by length cover type, right? So usually length cover data uh, is a raster uh, data, a raster image. And if you're trying to convert the raster to vector data, uh, if you're doing that for a large area, most likely you're going to run into memory error. So this is what we're going to do today uh, to help you calculate uh, journal statistics by group. Uh, very efficiently uh, without having to convert to vector data so go to tutorial 108 and then click so from here you can just simply click and download this one to your computer so just click save and then from there you can just open uh, the directory okay and then open the terminal or in the contact prompt and then just contact activate geo and then jupyter lab you enter just open jupyter notebook uh, within the browser and I'm going to show you step by step how to execute. So double click. And so this is the source code. Uh, it's actually quite uh, straightforward. So first we need to uh, import the libraries. Uh, we're also going to import the color maps uh, module because we want to cast, uh, basically um, use the color map for um, digital elevation data or some raster image. So just shift enter. And then once it's import, uh, we're going to create an interactive map so we're going to center around uh, 40 degree latitude and uh, weight uh, 100 degree uh, longitude uh, to the waist so basically it's going to center around the US and this is what the map looks like next uh, I'm going to get an, D, uh, add a DM so this is the uh, national elevation data so for the US uh, split that 10 meter resolution and as you can see this is what we're trying to use here um, uh, visualization so we're going to mini, uh, use the minimum zero and then 4000 meters and the palette so it's the cm palette at dm so uh, you're welcome to uh, to change to others so what you need to do is a cm and then dot hit tap on your keyboard and then it's going to bring up um, the auto complete so just palette hit enter dot and then hit tap again so from here you can select a list of color maps so you don't have to remember uh, the color code for the specific one. So you all you need to just to change to whatever you need. For example, you can scroll down. You can see uh, we have one here called DM. Uh, you're also welcome to select uh, the other one suitable for DM is called terrain. So for example, terrain, and then just shift enter. It's going to execute. And so next, just add the DM. So this is the Earth, en Earth engine image, and this is how we're going to visualize the data. And this will be the name of the data layer, right? So shift enter. Now we have the DM. And as you can see, uh, it's very nice, right? You can turn the layer on and off. Uh, you can change uh, the opacity. Uh, you can also change the layer visualization if you want. So you can see it automatically adds a color bar here, showing you what kind of elevation. And from here, you can, for example, you can change the color map here if you want. So uh, very easy to do, right? You can scroll down and then change to uh, whatever you want but I'm just going to close this one so this is the DM next I'm going to add another data set so it's the NLCD national land cover data set and so this is the unique ID uh, because this image has multiple specs or multiple bands and we're just going to select the land cover so this one essentially is the national land cover data set and the first line here we're going to add the data set uh, to the map also this is the name of the layer the layer name and then we're also going to add the built-in legend so um because usually for land cover map uh, it's nice to have a legend so the uh, user can understand 
uh, what each color represent, uh, what link of type, right? So this is the link of data. Again, you can turn the layer on and off. You can change the opacity. Uh, you can also change the customize if you want. So if you want to visualize, click the identifier and then click on the map. It should show you, for example, the elevation and also the second layer, the lane cover type, right? You can zoom in, I can click somewhere. Uh, it's going to show you different values. So for each pixel, um, for each location, we have two data layers, so the elevation and also lane cover. By looking at this um, day here, uh, the image lane cover, right? So each lane cover represented by one color. And what we're trying to do in this exercise is to calculate journal statistics. For example, we want to this one here, uh, the brown color, this one is agriculture. And they say we want to calculate the mean elevation of all the agricultural area within the US, right? So for the entire US. So similarly, we're also going to calculate the mean elevation um, for forest type, right? And you can also calculate for urban area, uh, basically any type here. We have uh, maybe over 20 land cover types in here. And we're trying to calculate, for example, the mean elevation within its uh, land cover type or standard deviation or the sum or the minimum, it doesn't matter. So that, uh, it's up to you how to change. But the idea is that uh, in the past, if you're trying to do the zonal statistic, you will need to convert this land cover NLCD data type to vector. And this because this is too huge, too detailed, and it's probably not going to work because it's, if you zoom in, it's so pixelated. So you're going to end up with a very complicated uh, polygon or feature collection. And when you're trying to run that vector data with an image for computation, it's going to run out uh, the memory. So it's not going to work. And so what we're trying to do here is to use a workaround that allows you to calculate the uh, zonal statistics. So the function is very simple. Uh, gmap.image stats by zone. And so we need to pass in here. These are the parameters. So if you want, you can just hit shift tap on your keyboard to bring up the uh, help documentation. So the first one here is the image. So what we're trying to use here, the first one should be the DM. And the second one basically is the second image representing groups, right? Different link cover types or um, different uh, um, develop, label, whatever. So as long as it's by group, by values, then you can use that one as the second parameter. And the third one is output the CSV. If you want to output the data as a CSV, then you can specify. Uh, so we're going to do it in the second example. If you don't provide this one, it's just going to print out the output data uh, result is a panda data frame. So you can just specify the data frame. You can also specify an area, an area. So this one here is the region. So for example, you can select uh, your, your uh, select an area on the map and then you can pass in as a region. And you can also specify the scale, right? Depends on the uh, spatial resolution. So this here, the data are 30 meter and 10 meter. So you probably, you don't want to specify 30 meter because if you want to use the native resolution, it's still very computationally intensive. Uh, if you want, uh, if it's frozen memory error, then probably uh, it's good to have the base effort equal to two. That means if the memory is not enough, it's going to calculate automatically find out the optimum resolution that's suitable for the computation. And basically you're going to get the results if you use the base uh, effort, but it might not always be uh, ideal because you might want very high resolutions, but you need to do a smaller area. So it's up to you. And the other one is the reducer. So you can by default is the mean, but you can calculate, uh, for example, the mean, the maximum, the minimum, the mode, standard deviation, mean max, the sum, and also uh, variance. So in this example, we are trying to calculate uh, just the mean. So what we're trying to do here is to calculate the mean elevation of each lane cover type. So just shift enter, take a look, um, only takes maybe two seconds. Then you get the results. Again, you can specify the scale. Uh, to, for example, that 100 meter or one kilometer. Um, it might not work because um, if you're doing large scale, it's, it's very intensive. So these are the results, for example, all the way from uh, 11, 12, right? So 11 is basically the open water, uh, uh, snow, uh, develop, um, vegetation, forest, for example. So you can look at here. Uh, quickly, you can see, for example, which type is the highest elevation. So you can see here the second one here, uh, the perennial 
um, snow, ice and snow. So basically those are because in the high altitude and maybe also the elevation is quite high. So it's within uh, expectation. And the other one is here, look at uh, number 52, uh, exactly number 52. So uh, swap and scrub. I would expect, for example, four is also to be high. Yeah, 42, right? So this is also a little bit higher and also 31. But this is a simple example. So you can use to calculate uh, whatever you want to calculate. And if you, you can also add a label. So if you press shift tab, there's also not another one here called label. So label means basically you can provide a list of labels so that you can join, for example, right now here 11. And you can provide a label, for example, all the way from uh, open water. So you'll be something like this. Let me show you here. Let me add another one here. So the labels, labels um, equal to, for example, um, open water. And, but this one, you might need to, um, let me see if you can, how many do we have here? Uh, always, I think it's 16. So I'm just going to use a simple uh, example, it's 16. So we can see here, labels. All right, so we have 16, but basically you can have, you don't need, I'm just using multiply by 16 to give you an example, but you can do it, for example, the second one would be, uh, let's say snow, whatever, right? You can continue uh, until you get, like the le a list of 16 and then you can pass in here uh, so look at this one here the parameter right? let me show you what it means so you'll be um, oh one second let me do this one let me change the second one just to show you the differences so I say for example the second one is uh, 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 snow and ice right? oh you'll be level 1 equal to this is no hmm? and then so labels All right so now your first one second one but you can change out if you want so what we need to do here will be labels um equal to labels e -E -L, right shift enter that group right so this is right now that you basically you add another column uh eventually you calculate the because for raster image you can raster image you can only have a value right you have a value but the value can represent a specific length cover type so for example open water snow just like what you have in here then you can pass in that one as a label and from here uh, you can get the result you can also quickly see for example which length cover type right associated uh, with value so this is how we can uh, create a more uh, meaningful uh, result so you can join the tables together and once you have to paint the data frame you can actually save this one to a computer so you can because this is a, a df a data frame and then you just dot d uh, to csv so from here you can save a file name and then index equal to four that means to force that means you don't need this column the first one here zero all the way to 15 because uh, if you open using excel you might already have that one on the left side so shift enter and then on the left side here take a look now we have the table right so this is basically uh three columns and each one is the the mean or the standard or the mean elevation for each length cover type and here you go besides using the data frame you can also directly specify the output so out csv and then for example in this case we're going to calculate the standard deviation of elevation uh, for each length cover type, right? So we're going to save the output so we don't need the uh, the, the Panda data frame. Uh, you can do it as well. So shift enter. Uh, again, you're going to uh, get the result. So you, uh, okay, so this is return the output uh, file name. Just refresh and then std to csv. Take a look at right? So you can also have the zone. You also have uh, statistics. So this one here is the standard deviation of each length cover type so if you want to for example see uh, which one has the largest difference so it looks like there's number uh length cover type 42 so come back to here and take a look at this number 42 right evergreen forest and that basically basically means it has a large variation for this length cover type so you might have forest that uh, some in high altitude some in 
uh, low edge zero. So eventually you have because it the height varies a lot. So that means uh, it varies a lot within the length of a type. So this one's just give an example. You can use to calculate, for example, temperature. Let's say you want to see the temperature variation within each length of a type. You can use this way. So you can you can do that at the national scale. You can do it at a global scale. So it doesn't really matter. You're gonna get the result very pretty quickly without having to download the data and to deal with the data. So just one line of code, you get the result. So similarly, if you want to pass in the, the labels, you can do it as well. So labels equal to uh, labels. Again, you just need to set the label as a list and calculate again. Okay. And then open. Oop. Put me to labels. Refresh. All right, so now you have the label. So again, you just need to uh, update the list to all the length cover type you have, and then you have this final CSV. Okay, uh, so I hope you find it useful. Uh, you uh, can apply to any other data set you want. Uh, basically, you have one image, and the other one, also the other second image is a group, um, basically a categorical um, image. They represent each group, each class, and then you can use that to do journal statistics within which one without having to uh, download data. Uh, if you want to, for example, you want to look at the source code, you can go to uh, gmap.org and then from here you can uh, image stats uh, by zone. So you can click this one, it will take you to uh, the, the, the uh, API reference. And from here, scroll down, take a look at this one. Take a look at the source code. Uh, it's not like complicated, but uh, just right now you just need one line of code without having to write this many lines. So you can also uh, use uh, a number of uh, reducers, not just the mean, right? And okay, so that's all for this video. I uh, see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.